Um, don't you want to update the link on the event page first? Imagine a world so people can find it. Where you're just a level one digital painter. And don't have the money for expensive training. Well, fear no more. Because your prayers have just been answered. Every Sunday, free overpaints, Q&A sessions, and exclusive interviews with industry professionals. Wojtek Fuchs, Joros Duro, and Danik Zabrowski. Level up. What's up, guys? Hello. Sorry, we had some uh, troubles here um, with our new setup. Um, yeah. Hello and welcome to session 85 with Max Berman. Hey, Max, and uh, sorry for the troubles here. Uh, hope it's all right. Yeah, what's up, guys? How's it going? Great. Doing awesome. great. So we are uh, here today with Max, who is a talented professional working in the industry for a long time. Uh, we've seen his work in Godzilla and Iron Man, uh, a lot of a lot of blockbusters. And uh, he's also a talented teacher. I personally taken his class uh, on Learn Squared and I learned tons. It's amazing. And I can't wait to learn more about uh, how you got where you are and, uh, you know, see those shitty paintings you've been doing for you know quite a while before you became so good i want to know everything um so <laughs> yeah let's go how are you awesome i'm doing good i'm i'm I, i'm on my first day of vacation well i'm like on the cusp of getting ready for vacation so i'm i'm feeling relaxed and happy <laughs> uh, too much of a crunch time lately right yeah, it's been a couple of months of crunch, but this is kind of a nice, uh, a nice week of, of, you know, coming out with a with a bunch of stuff and 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 then slowly backing away into vacation time. So, um, so it's awesome to be able to jump on with you guys this week. That's great. Uh, today we are also here with uh, Dark and Jonas. Uh, Hello, it's guys. Been, it's been a long time since we all been here together, so it's really awesome. Yep. Uh, to. Yeah, reconnect. Uh, any any updates from you guys? How are you doing? Before we jump in. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Right. Yeah, we haven't seen each other in a long time, and uh, we're all in different parts of the world right now. So Max is in U U.S. I'm guessing in L.A. Right? Yeah, I'm in L.A. Yeah, and then the Polish boys are in Poland. I'm still in Japan. So yeah, it's a Spread very international meetup today. Spread yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing good. Been good. I mean, pretty happy to be doing more streams again uh, re lately because we, you know, le level up kind of quieted down for like a year or two years. I, I don't remember, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, we're trying to get back into it. We have some stuff for the future coming up. We're not quitting just yet. Um, you know, you, you can't get rid of us that quickly, unfortunately. So, yeah, some cool stuff coming, and yeah, excited for the future. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Max. Um, I have some questions to you uh, about uh, what are you working now? And uh, can you show us a little bit of stuff that you've been doing recently? Um, I have your screen up right now. Um, and I can see that beautiful sci fi garden piece. What's that? Where, where's that from? <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is I, this I did in December, so it's it's not super new. But um, this is just from like a personal series of paintings called Disconnect, and the idea was to do kind of this um, this urban uh, vertical farm and kind of go apocalyptic with it, or like more Blade Runner apocalyptic urban farming. Um, but yeah, I, I did a couple of these last year, of just doing this series. Um, of these kind of like this desolate automated world type of thing. Um, wow, these look epic. Are you using thanks. the same same approach that you um, taught in the class? 
Um, no, um, I, for these, one of the reasons I made these is because I really needed to like up my 3D game. So um, I really forced myself to do a, like a bunch of paintings with a different technique and try some different approaches to see, like just to figure out how to incorporate 3D better into my map paintings. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of my, these were my tests to, you know, figure that stuff out. Yeah, it looks amazing, man. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, and, uh, and then, that... oh, sorry. Oh, go for it. Sorry, go for it. No, you mentioned that uh, you tried to step up your 3D game, um, and re I think that was yesterday or today. You guys launched the Kidbash uh, service, Kid Kidbash 3D website. Can you pull that up? Sure. I, I yeah. It's a, it's just a great timing uh, with those assets. So maybe you can introduce us to what, what Kidbash 3D is, and um, yeah before we jump yeah, into thank, the past. Thank let's, you. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really excited for this. Basically, as I've been like getting more and more into 3D with my map paintings, um, I realized that like I was always looking for models and kits and stuff to build environments out of. Oh, yeah. But finding good models that are like architectural and like their clean geometry, all this stuff to make it like easy to work with, I just couldn't find those stuff, those things. Um, so finally, I just decided to pull the trigger and start designing and building kits. Um, that, that's great. That's an amazing idea and really in the same spir yeah. spirit of what we are doing with photobash.org. Uh, we just lacked the libraries for our own, you know, just for our own use. Um, and looks like it's, it's, it's coming from the same root of just wanting to have that library for yourself and then just sharing it. Just uh, building it right. for this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's definitely. definitely. Amazing, yeah, yeah we spent a lot of time just making sure that these models were like you could put a camera anywhere. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're not like dodging around bad models. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So all these parts are sort of working together in the set, right? So you can mix and match and create your own structures here. Oh, these are UV too, right? Yep, they're all UV'd, um, and they're set up for tileable textures. Map um, Painter's Paradise, I would say. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, we've been working on this for uh, for a couple months. Um, I have like a really amazing team helping me out with this, but we have it planned so that we, you know, we're launching with these four kits, and then um, we have kits planned to come out every month for forever on. Just like where every month will be a new style and a new kit that comes yeah. out. Wow. That's awesome. Your wallet yeah. is, it, I mean, my wallet is forever your, yours, I, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You know, uh, I think that, I, I think for this, I, I, I want, usually if I'm doing a big painting, I'll hire a modeler to help me for that painting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people can't do that. So I feel like this hopefully opens the doors for a lot of artists who maybe are hesitant with 3D or they don't have the time to use 3D because they're on a tight de deadline. Like, I'm hoping that this kind of pushes everyone to be able to create, you know, even better work and faster and, and have more tools to pull from. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really nice to have like a whole set with stuff that's in the same style because what I've found, found is that if you look for stuff online, you can find quite a lot of stuff al already online, like free or paid or whatever, but the styles and the like shapes are so not matching and there's not like proper full kits out there that it looks a bit crap a lot of times when mm -hmm. you start putting everything <clears throat> together. So it's really good to have like a full set or multiple sets done with like the same type of artist, the same eye, the same like sense of proportion and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the plug. <laughs> no worries, man. Yeah, it's, you're it's welcome. Not, you know, there is not that much. Uh, you know, you can go to Turbo Squid and grab a couple models, but exactly what uh, Yana said, they don't usually work together. And, you know, for those epic environmental pieces or, um, you know, cityscapes, whatever, you need mm -hmm. that continuity or you need to put a lot of work into like matching the models together or over painting them to match the style uh, in order yeah, for yeah. It to feel consistent yeah so yeah, and then some are textured some are not textured and like some yeah. are too high poly or too low poly so it's really and good to have suddenly something your that's... scene is just like dying yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm an expert yeah. in that that's why <clears throat> i uh, couldn't make it in modo because my scenes were so heavy it 
was crushing on me all the time <laughs> because I was we just went, like... We so. went back and forth for a while on trying to find the perfect poly count, like mm -hmm. to be able to get enough detail that you can do close-ups of different pieces, but not kill your scene if you were going to duplicate it a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually checked out, the, um, because you, for the guys who are interested, you can get a free sample uh, kit on the website if you subscribe, right? Um, and I noticed that everything is also modeled in quads, right? So mm, it's actually yep. very easy to, you know, um, increase the detail with, like, uh, you know, with these kind of models. Because, obviously, if it were in triangles, everything would get messed up if you try to uh, increase the poly count. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah the geometry looks awesome. very clean. It's it's a great resource, that's for sure. Can't wait for uh, next, uh, you know, packs and uh, where you go with the theme. Uh, that's quite exciting to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. And also, I mean, that's been honestly my big project for the last little bit is just doing all these paintings and testing out the kits. Yeah, I've yeah. been. I've, I've been, been having a lot of fun yeah, with them. Dude, these are sick. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, they, they've been they've been a lot of fun to just like really dive in and, and oh, that, feel like I have all the tools. Like. Art Deco set, right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's that's by far my favorite. The Art Deco <clears throat> stuff. How many mm -hmm. of you guys worked on that project? How many of modelers and you know under your direction were working on this? Um, Create the whole set sets. It's four sets I, so far, right? Yeah, four sets. I have, I have, um, just, I'm working with awesome people, but Josh Cotter, uh, who works with, uh, Justin Fields over at Ironclad, he mm -hmm. modeled most of the models here. Um, I designed the pieces and, um, sent those over to him and, and he modeled most of them out. Um, and, uh, and then we, we have a couple other modelers who are working now, like, now that we've set the bar and we know like what we want the models to be and what level they need to be at, okay. um, now we have a couple more modelers joining on to be able to produce kits every single month. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, let's talk about like what is Matte Painter's library, uh, like how good can Matte Painter's library make it, make them like from your experience, you know, photo libraries, uh, 3D libraries. Uh, is there a difference of having, uh, you know, a good library or just improvising or modeling on the go uh, and grabbing photos of Google or having like built library that you always grab from? Like, where are you at with that? Yeah, I, you know, I, the way I always explain it to people is, um, is it's like a chef. Like, it doesn't matter how good of a chef you are if you have bad ingredients. You know, the better your ingredients, the better the meal is going to end up being. Um, and if you have great ingredients, sometimes you don't have to work as hard, right? Like sometimes like if you have like a really fresh ripe tomato and like great cheese, then like maybe you don't need anything else. Um, so that, that's kind of how I feel about 3D models and, and photo reference and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've, um, been, we've been building a, a, our own like photo libraries for a long time now. And I find it extremely helpful, especially with that like time uh, sensitive jobs to have those resources on me if I need a plate or I need a reference, um, even as an inspiration, it's just just priceless to to be able to uh, just grab those immediately without you know having to look for it uh, blindly. Of course, there is still a process of looking for stuff involved, but mm -hmm. not as much. True. What I like about Photobash, which, which is really cool, is the photographs are, are, are really well taken, like in an artistic sense. So I find a lot of the times, maybe I won't find the exact angle that I want there, but I'll find the color palette I want. The mood. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're trying to mix those two worlds together a little bit. Um, since just you know we're trying to experience those environments through the best lighting conditions possible and capture them with the best equipment possible so that you get the most out of the space um in terms of lighting and uh, you know when everything is uh looking really attractive meaning time of the day and the way you know, yeah yeah. It's quite interesting because, like, usually you assume that matte painters want very neutral photos and they want, like, you know, 
not a lot of contrast and low noise and very kind of like flat looking so they have a lot of room to play with but we've actually noticed well since it's also tailed to concept artists that um, the most popular stuff is actually the stuff that's already kind of inspiring uh, atmosphere wise mm-hmm. or shape wise or color wise uh, as a final painting almost um, because yeah I guess it's just a different different kind of approach that people like where they see something and then they feel like they can immediately build on top of it yeah, but if you have like a quick turnaround, you can kind of have the base that's already setting a tone for everything. Yeah. That you yeah, can just yeah. develop later. Yeah. And I think with yeah. the introduction of the stuff that you're doing with 3D, like honestly, if you have a great set of 2D photos and a great set of 3D um, kits, it's kind of like all you need. You could probably make super pretty powerful. much. Yeah. Yeah, you could pretty much make anything with it if you have an extensive library of both, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think what the what what's going to happen as we give everyone more and more tools to work with, uh, it takes away a lot of the barriers and it really comes down to how creative can you be with these tools. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I think we should be as like as artists and as a community, like that should be the um, the the hurdle that we're trying to overcome for ourselves. It's not how do I accomplish this on a technical level, but it's more the technical barriers are down. How can I be more creative and think differently? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, there's many people, but if you give them the same tools, it's, you know, it's up to them actually what are the results, you know? If they are more, you know, thought through or they are just, you know, stumble of the ready things. So, yeah, yeah, completely. Um, That's uh, that's honestly, that's the thing I'm most excited about for Kitbash is to see what people make with it and mm-hmm. uh, how far can specifically you those models to, yeah. exactly yeah yeah the unexpected results yeah exactly yeah. and specifically i want to see someone take two unrelated kits and put them together in just in some way yeah to make like, like more yeah. eclectic style right yeah like what happens if you put gothic and neo tokyo together like is final mm-hmm. fantasy. what what does that do yeah, yeah final fantasy exactly <laughs> Yeah, Pretty yeah, much. that's yeah. exciting. I I will grab, I think, the God of one first. I have some pieces in mind that I've been delaying for a while because of my work. But, yeah. <laughs> life, <laughs> life. We, yeah, we've we all been there. All right, Max, um, let's talk about Let's the jump past. into the shame. Yes. Yes, <laughs> show us, show <laughs> us. <laughs> no, come on. All right, what I wanted to ask you is where... And how have you started doing what you're doing? Drawing, painting, or it was just straight up matte painting and you always knew what you wanted to do? Um, Yeah, well, I I, I think a lot of people probably don't know this. I come from a film industry family. Um, So I'm like, I'm the third generation in the film industry in LA, which is crazy. But uh, my whole family was makeup effects artists, like traditional sculptors, painters. And So I grew up in the, you know, family business, working in the studio, um, sculpting and doing molds and casting after school whenever they needed help. And uh, after, you know, way too many chemicals being ingested and uh, and going to sleep with fiberglass stuck in my skin and too many times, it was like, this is not what I want to do. I want to be behind a computer in like a really cushy place, <laughs> in, you know, in my own comfort. Um, yeah, you'd rather have RSI than uh, fiberglass stuck up your uh, throat. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I had been playing with Photoshop for a while and doing a lot of online competitions. So, um, you know, I, I started just showing my portfolio around and one day someone asked, oh, are you a matte painter? Because I guess I had been doing a lot of that type of work. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what that was, but immediately it was like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever gets me in front of a computer doing art every day for a living. Um, so yeah, that's how I found out about it and how I how I kind of started getting in the game. That's awesome. So, so your first gig, you didn't know what you were doing. Is that basically what oh, happened? You just oh, blocked your way into it. Completely. My nice. my first gig, uh, I called every visual effect. Once I found out about matte painting, I called every visual effects studio um, in the phone book. I just went through the phone book and, and called all the numbers. And I just offered to work for free. It was just like, hey, I need to be in a studio. I just, I just want to be around people doing this every day. I'll work for free. Um, and finally, the last number in the phone book called me back and gave me an internship. 
Oh, and, the uh, days of phone books. <laughs> yeah, phone exactly. Books. So, yeah, while I was there, it was just, like, trying to paint, constantly hounding every producer, like, hey, you need a painting? You need a painting? I'll paint, I'll paint, I'll paint. And they'd give me little paintings and, you know. So you've I, been I guess... in L.A. at the time. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. You used your, sort of, you used your location to your advantage. In this case, you didn't have to really move anywhere, right? So that was uh, quite awesome Very for you. blessed. Yeah. yeah definitely a huge advantage to be in the city where all of this stuff was going down yeah how would you tell your like parents um tr like do, do you feel like uh growing up in this environment uh helped you or inspired you in some way yeah i think i think a lot of people are caught off guard when when they start working in this industry because like you guys know this industry takes over your life you know, mm -hmm. it, it completely consumes you. Um, and, and you do things in this industry that n very few other jobs require you to do, like not sleeping for four days straight, you know, like shit like that, that everyone else would be like, these are crimes against humanity. But for, for us, it's like, no, 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 this is just part of the job. Um, so I think growing up in a, in a film family, that stuff would, would came natural to me. Like I, I knew what to expect and I, that's just normal to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say that just generally living in, in California or in LA, is, it would be easier to break into the industry in general? Just being around that kind of area? I think probably 10 years ago, yes. Or f even mm -hmm. five years ago. Um, but, you know, five, ten years ago, the industry was way more concentrated in L.A. Like, there's yeah. still a lot of work in L.A., but it's not as concentrated anymore. More and more artists work remotely. And I yeah. think it's a lot easier. Like, even if you're in L.A., you're going to get discovered online. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's and you're just in your house. Now. You're on Skype yeah. in your house, like, a few blocks down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, like, I work from home, like, you know, and... You know, Derek and I are, are working on a lot of the same projects, and he's in Poland, and I'm mm -hmm. in LA. But like, we're still, in a studio's perspective, we're still equal. You know, distance because we're, yeah. we're not. You know, we're not in there. Yeah. You don't so, uh, necessarily to be need on on the place, right, on site to to do the job. Or yeah, it's a beautiful thing about where we're at right now is is that I feel like it's becoming equal opportunity internationally. Exactly. Yeah, the yeah, world, because... world becoming a little smaller because of the connectivity, which is great, you know. I, I think yeah. uh, our generation, um, um, me and Derek are actually a generation after uh, yours that actually got where we are because internet exists. I don't think I would have a possibility or yeah, like to, you know? to show my work, you know, uh, or to travel to LA just because I wanted to get in. There would be no no way. So internet is really what got it, us. It's really it really made the world smaller, right? And it's yeah. still you know kind of grabbing more people around. And also the studios are opening everywhere in Europe, in Asia. You know, it's it's just scattered these days. So it's not necessarily need to be just one location. Good thing there's internet in a dark Polish cave. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's not that bad actually. No, yeah. it's actually good, you know, there's less uh, traffic from other people, so you probably have really high-speed internet in the cave. <laughs> what are you implying? That, uh, like... Yeah, I don't understand, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. there are two I'm just I joking, man. Two people using internet in Poland, right? <laughs> yeah. And you we are dark. actually stealing the whole, you know, <laughs> wire system right now. <laughs> oh, uh... yeah. All right, Max, is there any work you would you would show us from the period when you were learning or uh, yeah please show that man just do that something no, that yeah. is not as awesome as your epic as you're keeping on the screen <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll show you some of the uh so the first studio that that called me back that i first started working at was called zoic and um I, yeah I, I i prepped a couple of the paintings that i did back then to, to kind of show show off i wanted to start with this one because i thought it wasn't like it wasn't too horrible, and and we're gonna. It's gonna get worse as we go on. But <laughs> okay, um, in this direction, sure. But but at least kind of ease us in. Yeah. Um, 
So like, you know, this would be the plate that they would give me. And then this would be the, you know, the painting I would do. Um, I think this is for, this is for once upon a time. Um, so it like started off with like, okay, like simple, like let's just like throw a castle back there and like some, some rolling hills. Um, you know, and these were all from once upon a time back then. Um, I think I have, I have breakdowns. Yeah. How many years was that ago? Like 10 years, seven years? This was 2010. So seven okay. years ago. Seven, yeah. Seven wow, dude, like these look already look amazing. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, come on, you have to have it. looks like this is still from on. the movie. Fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. Uh, look, one of the one of the things with these images is sometimes I like nailed it or not nailed it, but for the time, you know, sometimes yeah. I did a good painting for the time for the time and the stage I was at, and but it wasn't consistent, right? Like there were you know, there were yeah. misses for sure. And it was like maybe one of every 10 mm. paintings back then, I did something decent and then would do a bunch that were like, ah, what the hell is going on? Um, yeah, this is this is all once upon a time. Mm -hmm. But you had that sensibility, you know, I, you know, we can tell that on the previous one, you had some mm -hmm. issues with like a values, but you had the right sensibility to, to show that, you know, the mood, that the shapes, to, to kind of match the photos together. You had it from the beginning, so it's, it it wasn't like that from the beginning, right? <laughs> you uh, just, had, you just yeah. had to learn it somehow. Yeah, I guess so. It, yeah, it's funny because this just looks like the castle painting I just did. I didn't even put that together. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I, I, I had um, I had some sensibility of, of colors and, and composition, but it was just like, unrefined and and not really trained um, mm -hmm. but where does that come from um did you study on your own where did, yeah, you, did you find out about uh, matte painting and concept art yeah well i got lucky with zoic um you know as i was doing these like once upon a time paintings and stuff like that uh and i did a, a bunch of other shows there but um this amazing matte painter named Sid Dutton, like old school oil and glass matte painter, um, ended up joining the studio and they said, oh, we're going to like put you in charge of the matte painting team here. And he showed up and I was just the only matte painter there. Um, so I became his apprentice and he like really took me under his wing. And, you know, every every day for like 30 minutes he would give me an art history lesson or a composition lesson or something like that and that kind of became my art school it was just like the my time experience. with him yeah that's really interesting yeah, yeah it was cool because i got like the traditional apprentice system you know mm -hmm. that's how i how i came one up on one yeah yeah and then i would when i i left zoic and i went to stargate where i was doing like um walking dad or this is for parks and recreation um but while i was here i had this second mentor named cedric tomacruz and what he would do would he'd stand behind me as i'm color correcting an element and he would just go a little more red in the shadows a little more yellow in the in the highlights and he would just tell me these things as i was making the adjustments until it until the the photos sat together mm -hmm. and that started to like really train my eye of like looking for those colors and and the more technical side of matte painting oh yeah so he wasn't really doing it for you he was doing it through you so that kind of taught you the process by trial and mistake right yeah exactly and i think that's the the best way to teach but mm -hmm. it's it's so time and energy intensive um, and it's not scalable. Like you can't you can't work through five people at once. You need to like focus your time and energy on a single person. And and very few of us, I feel like, with all the things that we're all juggling, um, you know, we don't really get an opportunity to do something like that. And it's amazing when someone actually does take that time and energy and and give that to you. Yeah, so that's what you've been doing with uh, your Learn Square class, the mentorships. Um, so maybe you try to uh, try teaching yourself a little bit. Yeah, tell us about that experience, maybe. Of, of how do you find teaching? Yeah, uh, I 
I really love teaching. Um, Learn Squared has been just like I'm. I'm very proud to be a part of what those guys are doing because I, I really believe in them. Um, but but teaching and putting together the class was interesting because I really had to break down my own process and a lot of the things that are just intuitive to me or that I've just become accustomed to from, from years of doing it, actually splitting that up into the step by step. And, and that was like the most time intensive. Like the, the course took me four months to put together because of that. Yeah. Uh, and now doing the mentorships and seeing like the homework assignments that come from people is like the victory lap. You know, it's, it, it makes me feel really good and, and especially the mentorships. It's pretty much I get to shoot the shit with people for a couple hours a week uh, who are really enthusiastic about map painting. And yeah, I get to do kind of that similar thing of try to uh, not necessarily work through them because because we are like I'm sharing my screen with everyone. But at least I take their paintings and I recolor correct and I do the overpaints and stuff like that. And I think just by them seeing um, what they what they presented as as far as they thought they could push it, and then seeing what potential their painting could have, I think that alone pushes people and re-energizes them and gets them uh, Hope. enthusiastic again. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's so easy to fall into the trap uh, and have that person to pull you out, but just at the right moment, uh, I think. Like, it, it cannot be too early when, you know, somebody uh, is not even trying and then it cannot be too late when that person already gave up. It, can, it has to be sort of in the middle of that person trying hard and then maybe failing and then the person that knows more coming and helping and then, you know, pushing it further. It's so so easy to, to fall into those little traps all over. But I loved your class, man. That was amazing. And I love that the content that is as structured as yours and um, it really made the course uh, feel universal and not only for, I mean, you present a really specific matte painting approach, but it, you broke it down into steps that look easy. I mean, from the surface look easy uh, to manage. And then you do something really complex and uh, uh, like, you know, really kind of um, uh, com yeah, complex and you kind of get there step by step. It's really, really cool. So if you guys want to check it out, go to Learn Squared. I guess you can still sign up for a class, right? Mentorships yeah, are yeah, yeah. out though, right? Or there, are they? Uh, I'll start up mentorships again later this year. Uh, yeah. But but we just finished up another mentorship session, so I'm taking a little break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Let's but, go. But through thank those. you. Yeah. Sure, man. I mean, thanks for the knowledge. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this painting, um, this was one of the ones where I really felt like I started to actually uh, actually understand my own process. Um, you can, there's supposed to be a guy right here. But um, this was this was one of the ones that was like a milestone for me. Um, and I'll, I'll just break it down um, because it was early. I mean, this is still like seven years ago. Um, but, but this, like, I can pull through this PSD and know where everything is because it's exactly the same setup that I do for everything now. Mm -hmm. um, and this was where I like found it. You know. Um, do we have the structured way that works? You know, uh, for uh, forever actually for you, and as long as it's efficient, you can just stick to that. You don't need to actually. You know, you, you are actually incorporating like these days more free, but the whole kind of, you know, putting the stuff together and structuring it is the same, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like this is the exact same setup and method that I have been using for years. I'll, I've just refined it and gotten better at it and gotten better at the lighting and stuff like that. But from like an actual building of matte paintings perspective, um, mm -hmm. This was the one where I, I felt like I finally figured it out. So yeah, uh, before before you actually dive into like three D uh, workflow, how did you kind of learn working with perspective? Because I feel like you know when you're starting out, the perspective is one of the 
like a nightmare for a person that you know kind of starting out doing architectural stuff or you know environments how did you actually you know it, it was also by that uh, guy who, who who taught you those things or yeah definitely um i actually have a really funny story about perspective um when i was at at zoic it, it might have been 2009 um like pretty early on and then uh i was working on this show fringe and i had to do this matte painting and it was looking down at a five-way intersection mm -hmm. at a house that's being destroyed and everything needs to like line up so so basically it was like seven point perspective or something like that so you had your vanishing points of five different streets that were going in different direction plus like a, a triangle building that you were right over and it was the vertical perspective so mm -hmm. it's a seven point perspective and i didn't know perspective at all uh, and so i'm like i couldn't do two point perspective let alone like seven point super complex and everything i did was just horrible and um the painting was really looking like crap and the night before it delivered it was going on tv the next day and i go to sid who was my mentor was and i just go sid i don't know what to do the, everything i do just makes it look worse this this just this delivers tomorrow i don't know what like what what do i do i'm like freaking out in a panic mm -hmm. and sid just looks at me and he he was probably like 65 years old at the time or maybe mid mid 60s and he just goes max when you get to this point in a painting just start drinking <laughs> <laughs> like what and he had a bottle of vodka on his desk and he poured us two shots and I like took a shot and he's like drink some oh. drink some right now <laughs> yeah he was like you feel Very better I was like, liked him. oh yeah <laughs> he's like you do you feel better I was like no I don't feel better the painting's still like take another one poured another one <laughs> best and, art uh, direction ever basically the painting went out the next day it looked like shit drink no till you cared. like it no one remembers it uh, and he was just like, you know, there's going to be times when you like, when you lose, when like paintings don't go your way and like, they're going to be short lived. Most people won't care. Just move on and just try to get through it. Um, but yeah, since then I've learned perspective and also have a bottle of vodka on my desk at all times. <laughs> yeah, you, you share something case. with Dari. Yeah. <laughs> this is the advice we've been giving at Level Up for three years now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for confirming it. <laughs> from at, least episode someone, one. at least someone speaks with our same voice. Yeah. So, yeah. Eastern Bloc. <laughs> All right, what's okay, that? You ready? you ready for some real dirtiness? Oh, this yeah, boy. <laughs> Toxic uh, Sky. This is, this is a painting I did for that movie, um, Riddick. Oh, Riddick. Uh, yeah. uh, We've been this Diesel, was, right? Vin Diesel, yeah. Uh, yeah, Vin Diesel. This was after all these other ones, like years later. Well, not years, but a year or two later. So, like, it wasn't that. Like, there were a lot of misses throughout that. You know, there were there were some times where, like, I was like, oh, I finally figured it out, and I hit a new milestone. And then I would get an assignment, and I would do a painting like this, and be like, I do not have this shit figured out. <laughs> Do you think uh, it was like the photo that you're stuck with, or like the 3D model, or something like? Do you f because I feel like sometimes just the, the source material can really put you in a block, or can just make your life so easy because it's all there and it's just perfect. Or was it more like your way of thinking and your technique that you know sometimes worked and sometimes didn't? It it was definitely my way of thinking. You know, okay. sometimes you get a prompt and you're like, oh, I know exactly how to do this. And sometimes you get like an assignment where you're like, I can't see it, you know, like sometimes yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. see it in your head. It's uh, like a comfort zone thing as well, you know, like some stuff we just get so easy with that we can just, you know, hash them out like nothing. And then other stuff's like, oh, how am I going to do this? <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And I think that, um, as you experience more and more different kinds of paintings and have to go through those challenges, uh, you start to become quicker at, at, at problem solving. But in the beginning, mm. sometimes you have to make these mistakes. Um, you know, actually a perfect example of this is, is you know, the, the assignment for this is not, is pretty much identical to what my Learn Squared homework assignment was. Um, 
just an, an alien planet. They wanted a giant wall, but that doesn't really change from the fact that it's just an alien planet. And, and you know, eight years later, seven years later, um, you know, my, my solution to it is, is this. Um, mm-hmm. but, but it's because I've gone through this red wall type of painting so many times that I know what mistakes to avoid and what, what not to do. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so so you, yeah, you need those bad ones, uh, many of them probably in yeah. order to, yeah. Just to unlock the next kind of, you know, level of, <laughs> level, yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I see a lot of concept artists when they're starting out and they, are, are brilliant painters, right? Like their compositions, their colors are spot on and their personal portfolios are absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But I think what the challenge is when, when you're working as a professional and starting out is um, you don't control what you're being asked to do. And when someone asks for something stupid that you know is gonna look stupid, you can't just yeah. be like, oh, well, this this is just gonna look stupid, so I give up. You're like. No, 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 your job is now to take their stupid idea and make and it look to, cool. Exactly, yeah. This uh, is one of the reasons why so much professional work doesn't end up in certain people's portfolios, ever. <laughs> because it's like, oh, it, yeah. it, it did the job, but it, you know, you're not you don't, proud You don't want to show it off. So. You don't want to associate with it. Yeah. Or the version that you put up is like five versions before they changed, start changing stuff around. Yeah, Do you exactly. think? When it was still good. Do you think it's because of how emotionally you look at that piece? Maybe you struggled while doing it, or ju- it's just objectively bad? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> pardon me. You know, probably a big chunk of it is like the amount I struggled with it. Yeah. Um, but but also like looking back at it today, like yeah, I know it's objectively not good. Um, but I also know all the things I struggled with that I could overcome today, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, all these little challenge areas where I'm like, today I know the, sol- know the answer, but, but back then mm-hmm. I didn't. That's awesome. Uh-huh. So, it's kind of funny because um, most of the people learn um, without brief, I mean, if you're self-taught, you kind of learn without briefs, you learn without the production pipeline, how do you think that affected your um, your skill set? Uh, because you've been put into the industry like immediately. You didn't have time to think to and the do- water. Yeah, you just been put straight into the pipeline and plugged with all the briefs and stuff. Did you thought about doing your own personal pieces back then? Were you tired of like stupid? briefs that were coming in if there were any yeah yeah i I, it's funny because i do have i'm coming from the opposite end of so many artists where like yeah i threw myself into doing this professionally and then i didn't do any personal work until last year Uh, so uh, a lot of people you know they're starting with their personal work and then trying to get professional but like for me i was all about wanting to engross myself in this industry uh, so yeah it wasn't until last year when i finally was so fed up with the industry honestly i i thought i was leaving the industry permanently um that i was like i need to figure out if why i enjoy doing this and mm. i don't know how to do that other than to like try to do things just for myself and not for anyone else um, so was that because of some personal issues at the studio or you've been just tired of the industry like why has that well how you've come so close to burning out at that time yeah i think it was a combination of like um hitting burnout one too many times you know like and and then on top of that um you know I'm, I'm, i'm coming up to the 10 year mark of when I started. And since then, you know, I've been a map painter, concept artist, uh, a CG lead, a um, art director, um, uh, a visual effects supervisor. I owned a visual effects studio. I had kind of done every possible job in this Mm -hmm. industry and, uh, and I didn't like 
and like I, I realized that none of them were right for me long term. And and so I had this kind of emptiness where I've been looking for this thing for so long and I've been looking for it in a place that just doesn't have it. Like it doesn't I've been looking for satisfaction and that you don't look at professional work for satisfaction, right? Like you look at professional work as for me yeah. at least I've realized that the commercial work that I do needs to be there to support the things that actually make me happy yeah. um, and and aren't the source of my happiness. Um, yeah, it can be also so, yeah. like a, a technical benchmark of your skills, but then where do you go with it, with with that skill set, with that with ideas you have, right? It, it's hard to express on those projects um, long term. So how have you managed to go out of that little plateau? Yeah, so I, I, I was a staff art director when this all happened and I was just like, I'm, you know, I'm done, I need to leave. And um, I left and decided to take six months sabbatical, like to take six months off. And the next, like two days later, I was like, I'm not gonna paint, like I'm fucking done painting. And then I had this just like this urge to like, you know what, I want to paint, but I just want to do something that I want to do. You know, I feel like for years, I keep getting all these shitty notes or like paintings that are compromised because they're not my, what, you know, they're not my sensibility. Mm -hmm. They're what someone else wants. And I want to see what would happen if no one limits me other than myself. Um, and so I started doing, yeah, doing these personal paintings and it started to get me really excited. Um, you know, the, I started doing, you know, disconnect these. And um, and it started to get me excited and go, hey, like I actually have a style and a voice artistically um, that that makes me happy that I, I wanna continue to continue to do. It made me fall in love with painting again. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, that's kind of how I picked out of that plateau. So did you stay in that six months not painting or did you actually jump back in once you felt ready? Yeah, I made it like six weeks. Six weeks. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like a, a vacation time that you just needed to step out. And sometimes uh, we really need that space to, to actually grow. Um, yeah. I, I feel sometimes you need to just stop at the moment to get hungry again, you know, to just, you know, come mm -hmm. back with like a, with like a more, even not a power after a break, but also that I just want to do something. I just want to express something, you know, artistically. So that's, that's the feeling that's kind of, even after two, three days of the break that, you know, you had like a very hard time with like a deadline, deadlines, and you take like two days off, it's like you come back, it's like, Jesus, I just have like a, you know, full energy right now. I just want to do something, right? So. Yeah, completely. What what happened with me um, is after after like doing these paintings, I started to get calls for, for work and stuff like that. And and I just kept saying, no, no, no. And then finally it was like, you know what? I, I'll do that because I, I want this sabbatical to go on forever. Like I fell in love with my time off and I was like, I want this to go on forever. So if I'll, I'll do a day of work for you if I can get one more week added to the back end of my sabbatical. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'll do that. And so like, then, you know, some people said no, some people said yes, but I was like, I'm only working from home. Uh, you know, I'm not working weekends. I'm burned out. I'm not working after 7 p.m. Like I'm going to set my schedule and my lifestyle. And then if you, mm -hmm. your project can fit within that, then, then I'll do it. Um, and, and those jobs just started lining up for me. And, and allowed me to now, you know, now I work maybe four to six months a year and spend four to six months a year on on my um, passion projects. Um, like, you know, and that let me do kit bash and let me do all these personal paintings. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of finding the perfect balance, right? Because it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to overwork yourself when you are actually on freelance, but also when you are in the studio. But if you have, like you said, more structured days, it's something that I also try to keep up with, you know, just having that structured day, you know, from, from those to those hours I'm working and then I have like more time to to do other stuff or just, you know, having a breaks or 
you know, even just in general, normal life things, you know, so. Yeah. It's, Balance is everything. Yeah, it's yeah. quite interesting how by saying no, you accomplished more by, than by saying yes to every job, right? Yeah. It, it looks like that, that you've been just filtering and trying to, um, yeah, so you got all those jobs later because of your personal work that you've been doing meantime, right? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> and they're all jobs that like, you know, it's the jobs crazy. I take now are with clients that I love and doing paintings that I'm more excited for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it just takes courage to get out of that loop of, yeah. If you, if you want to see some, this is something that I like like showing and, and I haven't really told people to this, but it's been enough time I can. Um, all these paintings, like really what I was doing, like what I was trying to express was pretty much how I felt about working in a studio. <laughs> like, and, and there's like very romantic ideas of working for a studio, but the, this, the stage that I had just gotten out of was so like creatively desolate Mm -hmm. And 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 just corporate, I really corporate, yeah. was corporate. Um, you know what, what's it called? Those um, halogen light, fluorescent lighting. Oh yeah, cubicle mm -hmm. land. I, I I I truly hated hated it. Um, like every day, I was dreading going to work, and I had never had that feeling before. And so all these paintings were like very much what I felt about going to work every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are like brutalist uh, architecture type of overwhelming uh, structures. Yeah, it, it really and, bru and brutal opinion about it. You know, the whole mm -hmm. studio work. So yeah, and yeah, I, I and can then... see among all of that machinery now, something starts to grow. Literally, uh, you have some plants in there. <laughs> so yeah. It was like the last one I did where I was like, I kind of can see some light in here. <laughs> yeah. I'm at the end of the tunnel, literally. Yeah. And and then I, I had to put down personal work for, for doing a bunch of client work. And then when I finally got back to personal work, the first painting I did was, was this one. So it was like, it's been enough time and I'm like happy and free and I have this balance. And so now it's like this like... You know, I'm, fe I'm feeling too happy to do any like dark mechanical stuff anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to go a little bit more micro with uh, the way you work uh, because we talked um, like macro cycle. So you do client work half a year and then you do more or less um, your personal stuff half a year. How does your like week or day look like? Uh, when you do, when you create a piece, do you work on several ones at the same time, or uh, you go in and work three days and then three days of like just rest, or you work every day and like sort of a routine? Uh, how does it work? Yeah, well, my my day routine is uh, like in order for me to find some sort of balance with this whole thing, I need a routine. And I used to hate routines, but I realized that if I don't set up a structure, then it's really easy for it to fall apart on either yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, so my day doesn't change if I'm working on client work or if I'm working on personal work. It's the same exact structure. Um, like I'm, I work Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm I'm up at like 7 a.m., maybe 8 a.m. at my computer. Take care of all my business emails. Hit the gym. Come back um, and start painting and take a lunch break and I'm done at seven. At seven o'clock, I like close my office door and I don't open it again. Uh, okay. And that's, uh, sorry for interrupting. It. Yeah, but does it happen that you might just feel like, you know, like a immediate need of, you know, staying later and you just work after hours, you know, till night hours. Does it ever, ever happen to you anymore or? Uh, no, no, I, I mean, it happens here and there because like like launching kit bash yeah we we had some crazy late nights because this, you know there's a big team and this is a very personal project that's close to me and it and it required that but mm -hmm. but most of the time that's like a rare exception i i feel like the same discipline that you need to have to sit down in front of a computer until a painting is done is the same discipline that i need to have to walk away at 7 p.m 
yeah that's you know, really okay. important like that's it, yeah uh, you know throughout our conversation i keep hearing the same sort of theme of um work and rest and work and rest and sort of that balance it's something that i learned quite recently because you know having 22 23 years a lot of enthusiasm it's easy easy to overwork yourself and then burn out um so finding that balance between uh hard work discipline and then space for growth is just so important and um yeah that, that's that's has been a, a huge lesson for me too um and uh, you're hitting a gym every day right uh, i wouldn't say every no uh three times a week three times a week it's a gym yeah so you're taking care uh, of your like physicality um so that also helps right yeah definitely i you know for that i had to force myself um i like when i left my last job and decided to go on a sabbatical the first <laughs> thing i did was get a personal trainer it was just like I, this is something that is so easy to overlook that i will i will let this slip unless i've already paid someone to spend an hour and then i'm going to be <laughs> like ah, i don't want to waste that money i already paid for it you know yeah. like yeah yeah financial you commitment are, yeah <clears throat> and you yeah, are yeah. doing your best you know just to keep yourself you know uh healthy you know in a way uh, because i feel like if you if you feel good, you know not not just your body, but if you feel you know fresh and you know stretched and and stronger, also your mental mental uh, health is much better. It's much better actually. Yeah, I think Ash Thorpe says it in a really really good way. I really I love love this line that he says. Uh, he goes, uh, I treat myself like an Olympic athlete, but my sport is art. You know, it's like every piece of your life, if this is what you want to do and what you're going to throw yourself at, it doesn't mean working nonstop. It means structuring your life in a way to give you, um, to, to let you do your best. And, and I think that's balance. And I think that's taking care of all these other parts of yourself and, and your you know, and, and like your soul, like, you know, you need fun time, you need time with friends and family, you need um, time for your, like your physical health. And you need to live, basically. Things. Exactly. And and all of that is only going to help you do better artwork. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I've been reading <clears throat> recently a book called uh, Peak Performance, which is talking about exactly those things, allowing rest, allowing <clears throat> and it's examining Olympic athletes and their schedules and how pe how you know people who push the boundaries actually got there by sometimes doing less than but more discipline I would say which is which is quite um, eye opening uh, because I used to believe the more you push the harder you push the sort of better you get and to some extent it's true but at the same time you're not a machine right and um, yeah it, you only had have, have so much power um, to allow yourself then to recharge uh, yeah that's that's uh, yeah a anything you would like to recommend do you like um, do you what do you do in your free time besides art uh, and let's say gym and stuff do you like to travel or um, yeah. What's yeah, I, I, I love traveling. Um, and I, I try to travel a lot. Um, this year it's been almost every month I've been traveling. So it's, it's been where a lot been, of that, which is nice. Been last month? Um, the only month I didn't travel. Oh, no, no. Last month I went up to, uh, wine country in Palo Alto or Palo Verde. Sorry. Palo Verde in Northern California. Wow. Um, uh, but I brought in the New Year's at Cuba, in Cuba. I was there for January and uh, uh, February up in, in um, Seattle, Palm Springs in March, Hawaii in April, May and June was in Croatia. Um, yeah. That's amazing, been... man. I, I love to do that too. This is something that just keeps me going and it's always a good time to... I would say it's the perfect time for the ultimate rest for me at least you know? yeah 
just uh, breathe and we, get inspired by either nature or whatever you see during your travels. That's just amazing. I have a, tri a trip planned uh, the second time to Iceland. Have you been on Iceland? I, it's on the top of my list right now. Oh, I haven't been yet. Oh, I fell in love with that, you know? Oh, wow. That island is just so breathtaking. It's a little desolate. It's a little lonely there, but I love it. I love the way it's... Uh, what are you going to eat while you're there, Wojtek? I don't know. Are you going to eat seal blubber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try narwhal? Like I did last time. Yeah. I'm going to throw a curveball question at you. If you had the chance to eat a penguin, would you? Oh, it depends if it would be still alive, you know? <laughs> like a penguin <laughs> steak. Definitely. I don't even know if it's a steak. Is it, It's a, half steak. poultry, half seafood, so I guess it's like a filet. But, uh... Ah, holy shit, I don't know. Uh, I would say it's a taste thing, but I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm really kind of limited in terms of what I eat did, and... Uh, did any of you guys try dogs? No, oh, you can't eat dog. That's man's best friend. Yeah, dog. I have a dog just downstairs. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you want to come over? When I invite you to come over? No, I, I yeah, like I like, bus. I like I like bus. I wouldn't I wouldn't eat him. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't trust I, you. I'm just asking uh, because I know there are Poor places bus. where they where they eat, uh, but I never tried actually. I wanted to now try, you... but. Yeah. Now you've always got to be watching out for Derek. Yeah. Dude, why do you... Why, all right, never mind. I don't know. In, in Moscow, we tried horse, man. Yeah, it's yeah, horse is quite common, I think. Yeah, yeah horse, but, is, horse is quite common. That's I didn't okay, know. I, I, I didn't know that I tried horse, but Jama Maybe was Maybe you, you wouldn't even know you tried the dog then. So. <laughs> yeah, but horses know, are assholes. They can, you know, it's fine if you eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Some people already are chatting like, hide your dogs. Hide <laughs> <laughs> your dogs from Derek. Like, I, mean, I, can, I can imagine Derek running in his underpants with a spear, uh, you know. Jesus, I just, I just asked. I just asked. <laughs> Sorry, man. My imagination is just taking uh, over. Okay, change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, Max, where do you want to take your personal project now? Uh, is that connecting with Kitbash directly or do you want to take over somewhere else? Are there any plans you have that are as structured as your lifestyle? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's funny. I, I have a structured lifestyle and I always need to have my list of things, my my goals to accomplish every day, every week, every month. Um, but, but right now I have no clue where it's going. Mm -hmm. All I know is like, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy right now where I'm at. Like I'm, I'm enjoying my days every day. I'm, I like am starting to find some sense of balance and I'm having fun with painting and, and, um, and getting to chat with people like you guys. Like I'm really trying to enjoy this moment and, and at the same time, like, yeah, build kit bash up. Um, you know, continue to do uh, to do paintings for like clients that I love, um, and and I have a I have a video game that's going to come out next year. Um, so I have like all these projects, but but I'm not really looking five years down the road right now. I'm I'm yeah, just yeah. trying to keeping, look keeping one it year in simple and staying yeah. in the in the present, right? Yeah, well, exactly. What's that game about? Uh, it's it's probably somewhere on the horizon but can you tell yeah. us something about that uh it's not announced yet but it's uh it'll be announced soon it's coming out for nintendo switch and um it's, it's it'll come out in february and i think we're announcing next month but um that's just been another personal project that i i sat down taught myself unreal and been working on a game for the last like two and a half years oh wow um, so you secretly awesome. learned unreal and then just secretly a, secretly <laughs> on the no side. one about it Told no one, no yeah, Facebook exactly. post. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just the next thing on the horizon. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm pretty secretive with a lot of 
I wouldn't say secretive. It's just I don't want to show anything until it's, it's until I'm enough. happy with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Sure. Yeah. So do you do you write or do you use blueprints in uh, Unreal? All blueprints. blueprints. Yeah, that's why I chose Unreal is because I was like, I don't want to learn a coding language. Yeah, uh, I, I have my friend building a game now, and uh, he just got so frustrated with the spaghetti uh, blueprints that he started learning C++ just to write that code down, and it actually sped up the game quite a lot. So it's it's tricky there. I, I tried it, but it's a little bit overwhelming to me, and... Um, I was looking at actually doing some stuff in Unreal for a while, experimented a bit with like level design and stuff. It's really fun though. This engine is just mind blowing in terms of what you can do, the, the variety, and it's just wow. How yeah, you... it's, it's super cool. My Yeah, the blueprints, I, I hit a limit like a year ago where it was like, this thing is too complex now. Like, there's. Yeah. Yeah, there's over a thousand blueprints in there, and it's like, okay, this thing is too big for to be doing it this way, but I've already come this far, you know? So it's like, fuck it, I'll finish it up with blueprints, and if, if I do another one, I'll definitely, um, you know, actually use code. Wow, that's great. Uh, you know, you, you, all, you, you it looks like you also keep the variety between your personal projects. Uh, here we have a game, here you have, you know, something completely different, like personal, like, mud paint, mud paint style personal project, and then Kitbash as a sort of personal business endeavor, too. So, yeah, you're keeping your cars varied. That's pretty amazing. Uh, do you look forward to, like, expanding that, or you're just happy where you are and just investing in those things now? Yeah, I think, like, I I love, it's, I can say this now because I fell out of love with art for a little bit, and, and now I'm, I'm very much in love with art, but I'm also in love with business. Um, like, I, it took me a long time to, to start to fall in love with business, but I realized that you need it in order to create your own artwork or to make, to make the things I want to make. I need to love that side of things. Um, yeah. And... And I do now, so like I, I think I don't know what what I'll do moving on from these things. Like I'm I'm trying to get to the finish line with the current projects I have, but afterwards it'll always be something that's somewhere in between those two passions. That's amazing, Max. Thank you so much for coming over. This was uh, extremely inspiring. Uh, we'll be linking. Uh, I think uh, the website and all of your social media is up uh, under the under the video. We'll be linking kitbash3d.com. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we'll be linking that in the description too, guys. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to too. Uh, looks like an amazing resource. <laughs> Thank you so much for your for do, you know that you were willing to share your very balanced now lifestyle this is just really <laughs> really inspiring to hear that this industry doesn't contain only you know people that are overworking and overworking themselves and uh, you know you know what I mean it's just uh, really cool to to hear that uh, a lot of people are finding balance and happiness in this uh, world of ours this is amazing well, thank you guys so much for having me. Like, I, I, I'm big fans of all of your artwork, all three of you, and, and I love this show, and, and I'm, I'm very flattered and honored to, to get to be on here with you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. The honor is all ours, definitely, I would say. Absolutely. Sweet. We're just a bunch of dudes <laughs> still after all these years. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing has changed that much. No. Yeah, I think for Dark it changed a little bit. By looking at your avatar uh, on, on here, I think it, <laughs> you changed a, a little bit, but only physically, I would say. Yeah, just grown up a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, but went from Papa to Papini. <laughs> <laughs> or from yeah. Papini to Papa. Oh, God damn it! I, I forgot about the very important question. That. Yeah, there is still a time. Yeah, there's still time for it. Okay, so Max, there's that question we ask all the guests. I have no idea where it, where it comes from, but we just do it. So, um, there you go. 
Would you rather be a Godzilla or a billionaire? And why? A Godzilla? Like the monster? Yeah, like the monster. Like the movie. Like the cover on. of the uh, the cover of this event <laughs> with your name on it. <laughs> you basically can't say billionaire without being a traitor. <laughs> God damn it. That's, uh, I, you know, I honestly think I would be a billionaire because I think with a billion dollars I could defeat Godzilla. Probably. Or at least get to Mars and let <laughs> Earth fend itself. There you go. All right. Awesome. Thank you Thanks, guys man. for coming over. Uh, this was amazing. Make sure to check out our Discord channel. Uh, the link is in the description to this video too. There are a lot of people sharing knowledge and uh, their experiences and talking in the chat. You can find your own chat room there with the language you speak. If you are not comfortable with English to connect with your peers from your country or uh, you know native speakers of your language. So um, thank you so much for coming over. Stay tuned for the next one. Again, Max, thank you so much. You're an inspiration. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. See you later. Yeah, guys. Thanks, Thanks, Max, Thanks everyone so for coming. Take care.